Josh Toomey has joined us today. Now, Josh is, was one of those boys who, unfortunately, like so many, um, and who lived in places like Dubbo, where Josh lived, um, whose life was going nowhere as a teenager, and um, as a son of a single mum with a couple of sisters, and life was pretty tough. Not too much happening for him, and he would look like heading to be one of those unfortunate statistics where you know, his um, length of uh, life was not going to be too long, um, substance abuse might have been just around the corner, drinking, all of those things that, that happened. But Josh uh, had a mentor, his uncle, who uh, took him in hand at that stage and suggested that he move out of Dubbo and head for the Central Coast. It was the start of his life turning around and in fact uh, with a pregnant partner about uh, six years ago, it'll turn your life around won't it Josh? Uh, he started to think Definitely. I've got to take things into my own hands here and um, he picked up the Koori Mail. I hadn't heard of the Koori Mail, I've heard of the Courier Mail but um, there is a, a publication called the Koori Mail which I'll seek out in future Josh and uh, found a job there and uh, got a job with uh, Osgrid and was trained by Osgrid and now holds a certificate three in electricity supply uh, distribution power lines and in 2011 at the Australian Training Awards he was awarded New South Wales Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Student of the Year. Let's meet him, Josh Toomey. <laughs> Yeah, g'day friends. Last time I looked this good, I was actually going to court. <laughs> it was a bad joke. <laughs> right, you're with me. Yeah, my name's uh, Joshua Toomey. I'm a proud Wadri man, born in Dubbo. But first I'd like to pay my respects to traditional owners and pass that welcome to you fellas and um, women and well, cameramen and, yeah, MC. So, um, yeah, like you said, my name's Joshua Toomey and um, I grew up in Dubbo and... We had a single mum and, and we did tough, you know. We um, we lived with a lot of brick walls around and and, and it's I believe it's a generational thing, you know. And, and, and my mum, looking back now, my mum did the best with what she had, you know. And she didn't have a lot, but um, we lived on love, you know, and, and it got us through. And I suppose when I was old enough, she, she waltzed me down to Centrelink and, and she took me in there and she said, this, this is how you get money. This is, um, this is Centrelink. And um, so I, I, I went with that and everyone around me was doing it and um, I sort of missed that whole, well, when you leave school, you, you, if you're not happy there, you go out, you look for a job, you, look, you get an apprenticeship. Missed that sort of stuff and um, went, went along this street and, and I don't know, I started doing what everyone else was doing and, and I found myself in a place where I thought, you know what, this is no good, this is no good and um, I deserve better. I deserve better, you know, and God didn't come down and say, listen, you're going to be a linesman, you know, <laughs> um, none of that sort of stuff. But I, I, I suppose I was left with questions to ask myself that, um, is this what you want? Is this, is this how you want to live your life? And um, the answers were no, you know, I don't want to live like this. I, wa I wanted to get out, I just didn't know how. I, I wanted help and... Um, well, I had an old uncle from the coast and he'd come down and he'd drive down in his car, you know, and he used to spin out, hey, here's a lift, you know, and, and, he, and he'd say, you know, when you're ready, you, you can come up the coast, you know, and, um, and I was ready and I went up the coast and, and it's probably the hardest thing I've ever done, but most rewarding, you know, just, just, like, just like my apprenticeship with Osgrid and, and I was flicking through this Curry Mail and, and, I, and I seen their ad, now Energy Australia back then and, uh, coming from coming from where I come from, you know, my confidence was gone, um, self esteem was gone. You know, I can't. My head told me automatically before I did anything. Look, you can't do that. You, you, I've failed already. You can't do that. It, it, you know, it, it just doesn't happen. And and I thought, you know what? I'll, I'll just turn up. I'll give it a go. I'll just turn up and see what happens. And um, I turned up. <laughs> and they um, and I come through a program called. Um, pre-apprenticeship program, it was 10 weeks at Petersham TAFE in Sydney and so I signed up, I got into the hostel around the corner and and for my first time that C word, commitment, you know, and I started committing and I thought, you know what, I'll turn up, I'll see what it's like and if it's not for me, I'll go because, mate, oh, perfect runner, all my life I just run, when it got too hard I'll run, take off, not for me, because it's easier. But um, 
I couldn't run into a pregnant woman because, <laughs> um, you know, it wasn't about me no more. You know, I had to be responsible in the way I grew up. I thought, you know what, I don't want my child to grow up like that, my son, and um, so I was rocking a hard place, you know, but um, like anything, I turned up, and um, it was suggested to me, mate, you keep it simple, you'd you be half a chance, you know, and, and I thought, what do you mean? You know, and um, I found that out. I turned up when it was hard. I turned up when it was easy. I turned up when I went, didn't want to turn up. I turned up when I wanted to stay in bed. I, I just turned up, and, and, and the rest sort of worked itself out, and, and like anything... If, if you're riding a bike, you ride it long enough and you learn to jump and wheelie and bunny hop and, and through, through your mass, that's what happened, you know. And I did this course for 10 weeks and it was the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Most rewarding. I come out of that course and that first time, that feeling in here that no one can take away because you've earned it. It's a feeling in here. And my house walking around, you know, smile ear to ear and, and all my, stu- uh, my classmates, you know, and, and we did it. We did it, you know. And, and for me... It, it was the tip of the iceberg. I didn't know it then, but it was the tip of the iceberg, and and and, and I just I just had that feeling of you know what that yeah, that's what that feels like you know and and it, and it was good and went for my interview um, you know nervous all, all this new sort of stuff and I turned up and I just went in there and 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 it worked itself out you know I, I just turned up and studied it, the questions they asked me, I answered to the best of my ability and they, they rang me and they said, mate, yeah, we, uh, we want you to start and yeah, I was, just, I was just humbled, you know, all this hard work, it's 10 weeks and here I am staring at a four-year apprenticeship, you know, and, and then that bridge coming, I, I just took it one day at a time and yeah, four years, it's pretty tough, but um, yeah, I, I just... I'd come home and, and, and my son would be there, you know, and when I wanted to quit or when I wanted to give up and, and say, look, it's too hard, I'm going to run, my boy would be there, you know, and we'd, we'd need to pay the bills. We, I'd need to put food on the table. Um, responsibility. And, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's rude awakening, you know, and, and, and I was left with that and so I stuck it out. I stuck it out. And, and, and come, from, come where I come from, you know, um, I had to deal with people, I had to deal with personalities, I had to deal with um, bosses telling me, you know, not telling me what to do, but sort of suggesting and, and, and saying, look, you know, this is what you do. And and, and I found that um, through that process, it's um, it's about giving and taking. It's about giving and taking, you know. And, and I just kept my head down and I, and I putted through. And, and I, I, I suppose I kept it simple. I kept it simple. And um, yeah, at the end of it, I... I remember coming home and my missus, she bought me, because I love ice cream cake, you know, and she bought me this, I love the bunnies, you know, and she, she had me this uh, bunnies ice cream cake, you know, and just a few family members there and just blew me away, you know, when I finished my apprenticeship and I, and I got that that certificate, that you know, and I don't have a job, I've got a career. I, I get up, I, I go to work and people I work with are family. Their family, you know, my boss, I sit down and when he's not chipping me, <laughs> you know, we, um, we get on good. You know, I, 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 I could ring him and, and, and have a yarn, you know, and, and, and I, don't, I don't know where you get that. You know, I, I remember when my, my son was born and, and, um, and I, I had to take a week off work and then I come back and um, all the boys chipped in, five bucks each, and they bought me this big... Um, he had a big bunny rabbit in it and all baby stuff, you know, and, and, and I said, where, where did that sort of stuff happen, you know, and, and I thought, you know what, I'm staying, I'm staying, I'm chasing this feeling, and I stayed, you know, and I got to a point where I did an Indigenous leadership course, and, and that Indigenous leadership course, they asked you, they challenged you, they said, well, what can you do, what program can you come up with to, da- to take back to your community and, um, and have a go, you know, and um, I see how I thought about it, you know, and... My problem is when I think too hard, I do me any, you know. So I just thought, you know what? Let's stay along them lines at work. Let's keep it simple, and um, and, I, and I kept it simple. And, and and this is what I come up with. Oh, not me. This is what we come up with, you know. And it's about giving and 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 taking and, and what works for me and, and what doesn't, you know. And sharing and and um, 
that, that's that's what my culture is based on, you know. We we shared and and um, yeah, and it worked, you know. But um, I come up with you know getting right for the fight. I, I, I was thinking, you know what? What is it? And, and it's it's not just a job. It's not just a career. It's 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 a fight. It's a fight for me. Life. It's a fight fight for survival. Because with, with with my work comes everything else. My 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 income. My my confidence. You know my. I'm a decent part, you know. I go to work, I come home. Even though I don't like paying bills, I pay them. You know, it's just that I'm in. I'm in. The, I'm in that. I'm in that. The society now where oh, I'm starting to pay my own way and contribute, you know. And um, so I thought, you know what, it's getting right for the fight, you know. And um, yeah, so this this this. Um, Handsome fellow there, he's me. No, yeah, but this is this is what I come up, we come up with, and um, see that. So I, I thought, when I started, what what worked for me, and, and we'll get them all up, the three of them, yeah. And I thought, you know what? When I was, when I when, when I was feeling good, like when my well being, my, my spiritual, mental, and physical being was good, I felt good. I felt good, and I thought, you know what? I'll start from there, and um, I throw in little pictures because I believe pictures say a million words, you know. And um, that's what I look like when I did a bit of training. You know? <laughs> Next time. So basically, this this is this is what I do with the the pre apprenticeship classes that come through now, and um, and so yeah, I, I just ask them these questions, you know. I just ask these questions like, you know. It, it starts at home with you and your family, you know. Being honest with yourself, you know what I mean. Um, I've been told you could be the most successful person in in your workplace, then you go home and, and you can't, you know, and you and you hate yourself. You're miserable, you know. So that sort of self sort of stuff and the physical well being sort of, you know. I'm not going to do 50 laps of the oval, you know. It's, it's not for me. But um, you know, what's right for you? It's it's just about you know. It's basically about you and. And, and an important one for me, balance, you know, and, and this is simple stuff that's everyday stuff and sometimes when I get so caught up I miss it because it's that simple, it's right there. But because I'm such a good sort and, and everything's so important, it's all about me, I, I miss this stuff. <laughs> I miss it, you know, so just the balance. And, uh, yeah, you know, a bit, bit, bit about the cultural awareness, you know, so... Um, when I'm here, you know, or, or, or I won't act too different, you know, but when I go back home, like, the lap lap comes out and the paint goes back on. No, another bad joke. <laughs> but just... <laughs> when I... Acknowledge, acknowledge where, where, where I'm from, you know what I mean? And, and it's about, like I said, it's about sharing and coming together and saying, well, OK... You're mob from the ocean. You bring in lobsters and, and that sort of stuff. You have a kangaroo tail. You know what I mean. And and knowing that, yes, we're the same, but we're different. We're individuals. You know. And walking in two worlds. You know. Re reflecting again. You know, like I, I like I like looking back at that sort of stuff and, and just taking that time out to just you know encourage them to just just take that time out and just just. Just think, you know, and, and just have some time. Think about your goals. Why are you here? You know, how many times... When These are the questions I ask myself when it gets tough and I want to run, you know, why am I here? Why? You know, and what, what am I learning, you know? Have I learned, you know, have some time to think about it. Take some time out and and uh, you might say debrief, you know, but I just say, just sit down. That, that's me up with, um, nah, gammon. But you know, no, just just to sit down and think about what's going on. Where am I at? Where do I want to be? Okay, I'm here. Let, let's move forward. But just that time out to, say, to just think. You know what? It's worth it. It's worth it. And um, yeah, beautiful. This one here, values. Um, you know, and, and when I'm when I'm delivering this, I've got a big bag of minis and redskins and. So I just encourage them, you know. So you want a lolly? And tell me a bit, you know. And they get a lolly, but um, you know, usually with this sort of stuff, there's no wrong or right. 
there's no wrong or right. So it's about people just getting the confidence to say, well, you know, I, I pick some values up from from mentors or, you know, I've got core values. And, and just once you find out what your values are, sort of live and buy them. Live and buy them, you know what I mean? So if, um, for example, you know, one of my values is honesty. If I, um, you know, drink drink the last bit of milk and she asks me and I say, no, it wasn't me, then, you know, <laughs> usually I don't feel too good about that and I just get on, be honest and get chipped. So, yeah, but um, just finding them values because... You know, this, this, this sort of stuff here governs who you are. Governs who you are, you know. And um, that's, that's something you feel, so, yeah. Support. If you'd have said to me six years ago, Josh, you'll win, you'll win a couple of awards, you'll, um, you'll be speaking at venues with, with ministers, you'd be flying to Alice Springs and and um, put up in a flash room, <laughs> and um, you'd be presenting. I just said, mate, get him another drink, He's, you know. <laughs> but that's the reality. That's the reality of, of the support I've had. And it's people not walking in front of me or behind me. They get alongside me and they say, come on. This is, this is not a hand out. This is a hand up. The, the door's there. You've got to walk through it. Yeah, so, um, you know, and it's... And it's, and it's you know, and then work friends, family, workmates, and, and we support each other because not every day I'm going to have problems and my mate have a problem, my, my, my mate might have a problem and I'm actually half all right, you know, and then I can talk to him and, and it just works. It comes back to that giving and taking and sharing. Life on life's terms, I like to call it problem solving, setbacks. When it rains, I get wet. You know, I'm not special, so... Um, it's about dealing with them problems, you know, and, 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 and you get basically, you know, TAFE for experience at home in relationships. It, it, it's, you're not exempt from, from life. life. Life on life terms is going to happen. It's just all I can control is how I, how I react. So if someone, someone hits me, then I can get out and get up going like a goose or I can get out and say, look, get your details. And eight times out of ten, I get out and go on like a goose. But... It's about that, okay, this, this is happening, how, how do I deal with it? How, how, how do I deal with it and, and, and go about it the right way? Big one, this is a massive one, and I struggle, and still do. You know, walang means cash back home, like, yeah, any walang hung? But, um, you know, when I come through and I went from that welfare de dependent to working and, and saying, okay, I got a... Um, I've got a wage comes in every week. There was no value of it. I, I never, never res had that respect for money because I never worked for it before. It was given to me. So here I am working for it and, um, you know, it's, it's one of them things where a lot of people come through and, and, and I do have family members and friends who, who, who paid Wednesday, broke Friday, you know, because that respect and that, that, that budgeting, spending money, saving money, it's, it's not there, you know. If you said to me, look, you can put $2 in the bank and in 10 years it could be 20 or you said, look, it's $2 you can buy a lolly, I'd probably buy the lolly, you know, because I'm, you know, looking for that lolly. But, um, yeah, you know, just that respect and, and, and having that money and, and respecting it, yeah. Big one, another big one for me, opportunities. You know, I found that... Um, it's like breakfast. You only get out what you put in, like that wheat mix, you know. Like, but um, the opportunities, the opportunities will come. The opportunities are there. But it's what you, you know, it's what you make of them, you know. And that's that's one thing I I, I, I really talk about because it, it's important. And that's everyday thing. That the, the opportunities are there, but you're only going to get out what you put in. So if it's half effort. You get a half a result. You know what I mean? And, and for me, I want to make the most of my opportunities. I want to grab it with two hands, two legs, a mouth, whatever I can, and, and say, look, I don't want to die wondering. I want to make the most of this opportunity. And my old uncle always says, you know, and he'd be sitting there and with his cup of tea, you know, and he said, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. You know, and, and I just thought, how true is that? Simple, 
and, and it, but it's, it's true, you know. So um, they're not going to give you nothing. You got to earn it. Inspiration and, and role models. You know, this sort of stuff. Who, who, who inspires you? How? You know, and this, and this is the stuff I'm asking them. And, and some of the answers: mum, dad, um, you know, me uncle. And, and it's usually it's the everyday heroes. It's the it's the little people that are just doing the the decent stuff that get the mention. You know what I mean? And, and then I say, well. Do you see yourself as a role model, inspiration? You know, I believe everyone's a role model in their own in their own right. You know what I mean? At home, I'm a role model. You know, my boys watch me, and so you know, and I've got the choice today. I have a choice. What type of role model do I want to be? You know what I mean? And again, when I when I want to run and and give up, well then it's I can't. You know, it's it's too much to lose. And are you a role model? I mean, in both situations, I feel like I'm the one screaming sometimes and the one just not listening. Because how important is this? Who's got teenage kids? Look at me, 27 year old person, you've got teenage kids. But, you know, talking and listening. Really, like, listening. I, my missus will come home with a brand new shirt and I say, Where did you get that? I told you. Well, we had that conversation, but I wasn't listening. You know what I mean? So she's safe, but <laughs> really, <laughs> really zoning in, really, really zoning in and saying, let's have a conversation. I'm hearing you. Let's talk. You know, and communication skills at work, you know what I mean? Especially with electricity, where I work, if I don't understand, I'll ask. And I won't, I won't do something until I understand. I won't climb a pole until I understand what I need to do. You know, so um, understanding and, and uh, who in your life's a, a good listener? Usually, mum, nan, um, cat, dog. You know, so and we just encourage them to say, well, he, you know, what a good listener is, and you know, just give them that sort of hands-on stuff. Questions again. I went into that earlier. Why ask the question? No question is a silly question. The one you don't ask is a silly question because it could, could save your life. It could save your friend's life. Why do something you don't understand? And I get in trouble all the time with this. So we'll buy something from Kmart and I'll come home and I don't need to ask a question because it's on the box and I'll, and I'll do it. And I'll say, Kmart are good, they send us extra, extra bits. <laughs> and, this, and this thing's a bit wobbly. She goes, hang on, let's stop. Let, let's do it. A, A1, AB, and oh, no, and usually we get there, but you know, no shame. This is a big one for me. We, um, when we were growing up, if you were recognised in our community, we used to bag you. Ah, look at him, la. He's, um, he got an award, la. Look at him. And, and, and we, and we used, and, and, and it would shame you. It would shame you. You wouldn't want to, you wouldn't want to do that stuff. You know, whereas my attitude today is, Mate, congratulations, well done. Well done. If this is what it's about. And and, and I wanna get rid of that I wanna to fight to get rid of that, you know, because this should be acknowledged. It should be good on you, mate, high fives, you know? And um yeah. Leadership. You know what makes a good leader? What what inspires other people to follow? You know, and, and just that, every, that everyday stuff, that, that, that stuff that gets them thinking, gets them in the engine room and, and, and says to them, all right, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And, and, the, and the people that come through the program, they could be, they could be 35, you know, with, with three kids and, or they could be just straight out of school. They're, they're all different. But this is just stuff that, that we ask them and it, and it gets that passion going. It gets, that, it gets them to say, well, hang on, I need to make the decision. I need to get rid of the wishbone and get a backbone. <laughs> because this, this stuff here, no, you're right, this, this stuff here is, it, it's, not, it's not big, it's not leadership of Julie Gillard and, and, and that big stuff. It's about that little stuff, that, that little stuff in here, the, the, the me, the you. You know, because, oh, again, I believe we're all leaders. 
Gold said, in this one, I used to do a bit of running. No, I gave it. I'd only run to the E, no. <laughs> so, ambulance. No, but, mate, I miss all this stuff. You know, Gold said, and they'd, they'd say to me, you need to have, you know, why do you need to have golds? And I'd say, all right, I'll make a gold. I want to make a million dollars. No, no, not going to happen. But, you know, so let's make them realistic, you know, and, and, and we say, okay, well, why don't you make a gold, finish this 10-week course? You know, just little things like that and <coughs> celebrate your achievements. If you're, not, if you're not celebrating your achievements, why are you doing it? You know, you get to an end of a gold. I'm not saying go buy eight bottles of wine <laughs> and just celebrate. I'm just saying, look, you know, sit down. If you like ice cream, get an ice cream cake. <laughs> You know, but celebrate, celebrate your achievements because you, you've reached it. You know, you've reached the goal. And basically, that's it. You know, and that, this will be, we, we try to push through and get that going, you know. So, so at the end of the day, it's, it's, it's not about me, it's up to them. You know, it's up, it's up to the people that are doing it. I'd love to do it for them, but I can't. The reality is, it's, it's about them. It's about, it's about, it's about you people you know, providing these opportunities, you know, and it's it, it just, it's just one of the things I'm passionate about. I'm passionate about it. Why, why do I do it? Because if I don't, who will? Why, why do you come here to this conference and you give your time and you, and you share with people? Because if you don't, who will? You know, and, and that's what I look at. So when I'm flat out laying up in that big bed and I'm, you know, and I'm really thinking, why do I'm doing this? No, I give it. <laughs> if, I, if I don't who will, if I don't come in and share with you what's helped me, then that's selfish. I'm holding on to that stuff that could change someone's life. And it's about changing lives, you know. And um, for me, that's what it, and, and my group activity, I just give them, and I feel like a teacher, I give them a bit of butcher paper, put them in groups of three or four, and I, and I say, all right, traditional and electrical, bring it together. You know, and you get electrical kangaroos and, you know, they're all boogieing and that. But um, it's about that keeping it fun, keeping it fun. But, look, we're here to learn. We're here to learn. We're here to work hard. We can enjoy it, you know, but, um, yeah, we, we, need, we, we need to um, keep focused. And, um, yeah, so for me, if... I try to keep it as simple as I can. Um, give give to you people what was freely given to me, and, and sometimes that's just a conversation time a day. Um, and, and, and try to give people a hundred percent, you know, a hundred percent, and um, and generally it works for me. For me, so um, thank you for clicking. On uh, look, I know it's hard work, but thank you for clicking. Um, thank thank you for having me, um, and. To see non-Indigenous people, you know, fighting for the same sort of stuff I am just, just blows me away. Just blows me away, you know. So um, thank you, guys. And, and um, yeah, so, yeah, thank you very much. Thanks, Josh. That was tremendous. I'm sorry we haven't got any ice cream for you. So, so, uh, <laughs> this is as close as we can do. And to our... Other panellists, thank you. We just have um, something to remember the conference by. We have about seven minutes for questions, unfortunately. Uh, all very quick, so if we can get a microphone quickly to the gentleman in the middle who's got his hand up, he can lead things off. Uh, Phil Lutfus, uh, uh, sorry. Uh, we just, we, we just, oh, sorry. Ted, we'll, just, we'll take you next. And we'll oh, hi. Uh, my name's Leng So from Ramir Training. Uh, Shane and Lee... Thank you so much for those two presentations, and especially you, Josh. You have given me a good inspiration. Back in uh, February of 2008, I heard uh, Kevin Rudd's sorry speech, and it really, truly inspired me. Within one month, I wrote to the uh, federal and state ministers for uh, Indigenous Affairs, uh, offering free training, because I run a, an RTO, delivering training to um, pipelines running across all over Australia. And what disheartened me was how difficult it was to try and give the training away. These pipelines run across a lot of native title lands, 
and all I needed was to identify uh, people in the community through government that could uh, source the right candidates for me to attend the causes that I run. So if I'm out at Newman or I'm out at Tennant Creek running a, uh, a pipeline type course, I said I'd train them for, for nothing. I'd uh, certify them because we're an RTO up to Cert 4. And four years down the track, not one thing has happened. You know, to cut a long story short, I just get a run around. But listening to you guys talk, is, it has inspired me today. So, and I thank you for that. And if there's any suggestions you guys can make to help me to uh, provide this service, because I think it's an ideal opportunity for indigenous people to work on pipelines. It's, it, it runs right through their backyard. So thank you, guys. Mm. Okay. You might... Um you might be able to talk to the gentleman out of session during the tea break or something like that. So, Ted? Uh, thank you, Phil. Uh, notwithstanding the bleak picture that I presented earlier this morning, uh, uh, which I do think is the sad state of affairs nationally, uh, I just want to put on record that I've been informed uh, and inspired by three very admirable speakers this afternoon. Thank you. <laughs>